We all know public transport is inherently green, but in many places it can be even greener. As governments, PTAs and operators work together to decarbonize further, it's important that a strategic, planned, whole systems approach is adopted to deliver the best outcomes. Here we're going to focus on buses and specific elements to think about when a region is planning for decarbonization. At the start of any decarbonization journey, the most important thing is to define objectives. This will help you to develop a long-term plan with a strategic view of the priorities and processes together with the steps to deliver them. So how do you define objectives that are clear and strategically sound? First, it's important to understand in depth what decarbonization involves. Yes, it's about reducing CO2. But multiple and sometimes competing factors need to be weighed up. So what should you be considering? As you transition to an alternative fuel technology, I think it's really important that you set out your objectives. Different technologies can deliver different solutions for you. So for air quality, then you're going to have to go with zero emission, electric or hydrogen opportunity. But if you're looking for a global footprint to reduce the overall CO2 impact, you could be looking at biofuels or you could be looking at compressed natural gas. And you need to tackle both because you want to support your local community, not just the global environment. At the moment, there are three main options to support decarbonization. Biofuels, hydrogen and electric. They each have pros and cons. Electric has many benefits, but can have range issues. Hydrogen is better for long distance, but it's a relatively untested and expensive technology. A biofuel fleet is cheaper, but produces steel pipe emissions. There are local air quality and global CO2 pros and cons for each fuel type. And there are also operational and cost issues to consider. You must assess your own needs and priorities, then choose the best long-term solution. But decarbonization isn't just making decisions about new fleet or fuel technologies. You're also going to need to think about infrastructure, maintenance and charging strategy. It's a very complex task to make this transition to zero emission during the normal operation. I think it's very important that you have a sufficient planning to make this transition a success because you have a lot of different organizations, different stakeholders where you have to collaborate with. For the long term you want to be on the, on the best spot from a logistics point of view. So you can reduce cost and make a more efficient operation. It's also very important to narrow down the lead times from buying a bus to implementing a bus. There is no time for errors. In defining costs you should be aware of your electricity provider but the main thing is in how do you will do your maintenance and you should consider whether you do the maintenance yourselves or with the contractor. The infrastructure you need to have in place, the most crucial one is the charging facility. There are two kinds of charging operational right now. You got the overnight charging, so the vehicle is coming in late night and overnight it will charge with less speed. And opportunity charging is while you're in your timetable for a short notice, high volume of energy in there, and you are charged a bit, and you can go on with your timetable. In Limburg, the Netherlands, we decided to include opportunity charging. Here in Limburg is our biggest electrical fleet. Uh, it's 95 buses that we have. We charge those buses with 95 depot charges, but besides that we have around 10 to 12 fast charges. It's quite a challenge to have it installed. Uh, you need to have the uh, energy available. You see also the, the transformator station there, uh, the transformator for the energy that converts the 10 kilovolt to 400 volts. The best way to charge is on the beginning of the line or on the end point of the line, because if you charge during the line, then you have to charge with the passengers inside. And then the driver and the passenger and the bus has to stand still. So those are three assets that we try to keep moving. Of course, different situations need different solutions. Here in Brixton, London, we went for overnight charging. So the main power comes from the substation, which is just across the road. Um, 11,000 volts has to come across the road, in under the pavement, and then go into the green box here, which is a ring main unit. 
So if you imagine a petrol station, that's your fuel tank, that's your gun that, that puts your fuel in. They are fed by all this cabling that goes up, over, through the ladder racking, down into the chargers. So the bus can go out at four o'clock in the morning, finish at 11 o'clock at night. So it'll do that whole journey during the day with one full charge. When developing your infrastructure, it is crucial to plan ahead and design the right maintenance and charging strategy for your operational requirements. So let's say the infrastructure is in place and you've decided on your new fleet. But what about the life cycle costs involved? Life cycle cost is really important as well as contract length. We've got to also think about the wider environmental impact of the production and disposal of assets as well. So I think making sure that we could use the maximum useful economic life of an asset is really, really important. Therefore, either long-term contracts that can utilise those assets for the useful economic life, or making sure those assets could transfer to alternative operators at the end of a shorter-term contract to make sure that that higher upfront capital cost is amortised over the length of the useful economic life of a vehicle. The benefits of an extended contract is that you have a long time to uh, use the benefits of your new rolling stock, of your infrastructure, and it gives comfort for the transport operator that they can use their assets for a longer time. Understanding life cycle costs is an important factor when considering which technology to choose to deliver a decarbonisation strategy. High upfront capital costs of an electric bus are offset by the lower running costs per kilometre. So the more it's used, the sooner cost parity will be reached. When costing your decarbonisation strategy, upfront costs are just one factor. It's also vital to consider running costs and maximising return on investment across the whole economic life of your assets. When it comes to delivering your decarbonisation strategy, you're going to need to work in partnership to make it happen. Here in Limburg, we have a unique contract with our transport operator Arriva. They are responsible for the full operation of regional trains and buses throughout the complete province of Limburg. The reason that we decided to put the full freedom and coordination at our transport operator, because you need specific knowledge to operate such a new system and such a new fleet. We started this franchise in 2016. It's a complicated start. There was barely nothing in the electricity grids and in the uh, charging facilities for electric buses. So we are, were in close contact with our PDA, our contract owner, but we were the entrepreneur on implementing this zero emission. As soon as you know the ambition and key objectives of the PDA, you need to have a close collaboration a close partner to discuss the design phase, the mobilization phase and also operational phase of the vehicles. If you have to install charging infrastructure in a public area, you need to have a good cooperation with your municipality. Though, especially when they own the ground, they uh, have to give you permission for putting this in a public area. And, and the big challenge was that they didn't know exactly what it is, it's all new. With these kinds of implementation, it's crucial to choose the right partners from start off. Be open for developments during the journey you're in together. So it's more about partnership than about contract management. Don't set everything in stone by the start, but develop. To deliver your decarbonization strategy successfully, finding flexible, collaborative and committed partners early in the process is critical. When we talk about public transport and decarbonisation, there's a bigger picture to think about. How can we make it as attractive as possible? How does it fit with other modes of transport? And what does that mean for decarbonisation? It's important that we create a multimodal transportation system, where public transportation is a major part of it. But it's not only the public transportation that has to be sustainable, it has to be the chain of modes you use during your travel to your final destination. You need to have a fast service, reliable, you need to have it quite consistently. And as well, that pace can be shared with others, like for example, with bikes. You can actually incentivize people using green transport because it will be faster. 
you have a bus standing still, it's, it's still a waste of time, but also on energy. In bigger cities like Maastricht, eh, we uh, try to influence the traffic lights. So if a bus comes in, the traffic lights switches to green. And that's also uh, a step we take uh, towards uh, zero emission. Now, let's explore another congestion busting technique, such as bus rapid transit schemes. So we're currently on the Luton and Dunstable guided busway. It connects the towns of Luton and Dunstable on what was a former railway line. So um, six metre beams form two tracks. Buses run alongside each other. What passengers are looking for is very, very simple. They want a bus to turn up when they expect it to, and they want to get to where they want to be in the quickest time possible. And that's what the busway does. So decarbonisation is more than simply transitioning away from fossil fuels. It demands efficiency. And an efficient public transport system is one that is joined up and keeps people moving. You have a long-term plan for your region and you have partnerships in place to deliver it. But what about funding? And is there more to funding than finance? The opportunities um, around the European funding for authorities are really important. We have seen European funding as a way to accelerate and to boost the collaboration also with the public authorities and different stakeholders, such as companies, industry, but also universities in the field of climate change, sustainability, innovation and corporate social responsibility. It's important to integrate and build on European funding within your decarbonization plan because it's going to give you a very nice insight on innovation, on climate change, but also to accelerate and boost your mission and visions related to decarbonization strategy of your authority. So European funding is more than just about money. It can also unlock collaboration and innovation to accelerate your decarbonization plan. The transition to a zero emission system is a very important but also challenging task. You have to follow a lot of national, provincial but also local regulation. But actually at the end everyone has the same common goal. Everyone wants a sustainable an environmental friendly, a comfortable, reliable transportation system and environment. When you embark on anything in life, you need a plan. Plan for those long-term goals, plan for those long-term deliverables, think about who you're partnering with, think about possible solutions that, that could apply to you. So when I look across Europe at successful projects and how they've come about, it's not single initiatives, it's something that is built over time with a great long-term plan. My top advice would be structure, communication and commitment, you have to want to deliver this. Zero emission is important for everybody. I see Arriva in the future uh, as only zero emission buses on the road. That's not only because uh, our PTAs want to do the, that, but uh, it's also because Arriva wants it. We truly believe in, an, in, in a better future and we are part of that future as well. So uh, when you drive so much buses and trains, you have to take responsibility to make a push forward in the energy transition. This is an exciting time for society. This decarbonisation agenda is, is something that together we can be a part of that. When I talk to my people in depots, in, in offices, on buses, on, in rail across Europe, you can see it in their eyes. They're determined to make a difference and I'm really, really proud to be a part of that.